Hi, if you're watching my video for the very first time, Happy New Year to you. Hope you're doing all right. Hope you're great. Hope the year has been so good to you today. Um, so today I want to show you how to create user database in Flutterflow. This is going to be part of a broad Flutterflow tutorial. Uh, I, I'm, I will soon be releasing a beginner's guide to Flutterflow or probably a Flutterflow crash course where you're going to learn a whole lot of stuff. But this time, let's just go ahead and cover how to create user database in Flutterflow. Database is a pain. I mean, it's if your database is not done right, there's no way your, your app is going to work right. So let's go ahead, figure that out, give it, uh, you know, create that user database so you can start getting users to your application. Let's get started first is to create an application so just going to go ahead and create a test application if you are on the premium plan you can go ahead and um you know choose one of these applications to get started with i'm going to go ahead and create a test application my card isn't working so i can upgrade my um i can pay for those mod subscription of flutterflow mm, i don't know but let's just go ahead and create a test so i'm going to say create user that's what i'm going to call it because i'm going to delete the application right away so click on create new and just don't go ahead just go ahead and skip so this is the your normal flutterflow dashboard but what we are interested in is the create database so we're interested in this flutterflow firestore this is what we're interested in so this is the way it works if you haven't created your if you haven't created your fire firebase set up your have your set up your firebase uh, you should go ahead and create that. There's a video down below that will show you how to set up your Firebase. I've created that already. And um, the first thing to do is to just go ahead and create create collection. But before we do that, Flutterflow provides you some very good alternative. What Flutterflow normally use, it uses Firebase. Firebase is a NoSQL database. It uses SQL, but it doesn't work like the conventional SQL is something related to MongoDB, you know, and the likes. It's a NoSQL database. It's um, it works right off the bat with Flutter, since uh, Flutterflow uses Flutter, so it's a very good choice. But you know, a lot of us we have the we have the SQL background, so you want to be able to do all those your SQL query. You want to be able to do you know stuff that you would normally do with SQL. One of the reasons why I love why I would say I do not really like the NoSQL database is because it's um, it's a bit difficult when you're creating a relationship. So I'm going to talk about that when I create the when I, when. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in the Flutterflow Beginners course, but that's something you should keep on top of your mind. There are other options that you can explore. You can explore Superbase. Man, this is sweet. When I mean it's sweet, I mean it's sweet. You can explore Superbase. There is another tool that you can explore. It's called Zeno. You can explore Zeno. Zeno is a, is a backend. Like It's one of the best backend you can ever imagine. Just that. Uh, the pricing. Mm, the pricing is pretty expensive man it is pretty expensive compared to superbase so i i think you should check out superbase first before heading all the way to uh zeno because you're going to be if you're somebody who's just creating stuff and you want to scale uh, i think it would be better for you to start with superbase besides you can always move your stuff from one um place to another so let's go ahead with um with setting up our app so, so remember what we're setting up is a user application. So if you are, if you're just getting started for the very first time, collection is like the name, like the name that you will give to your, to your, to each noun in your application. You know, they say a noun is the name of a person, animal, place, or things. That's what a collection is. A collection is the noun of your application. For example, if you're creating a social media application, what are the noun? The noun is the user, yeah, the user. Then you also have another noun called the post. You also have another noun called the messages. You also have another noun called notifications. So you can see those are the things that people will come around and do in your application. If you're creating an e-commerce store, you have a noun called the cart. You will have a noun called the... Um, users you have now called items so those are things that you should you know have at the back of your mind whenever you're trying to create an application take your pen first of all and write the list of nouns that it's going to be in your application before getting started 
So uh, the noun that we're using right here is called the user. That's the name of the noun because we're just setting the user part of the database. That's what it's called. And and one thing I like about Flutterflow, new update of Flutterflow, is that you're able to it's able to populate it for you. You know, it's able to populate it for you based on what other Flutterflow users have been using. So you can use a template right off the bat. But this time we're not going to use the template. We're just going to go uh, forward because we're learning. So uh, we're going to start from scratch. That's what we'll click. And as you can see, Flutterflow has something called a feed name, and it has data type and it has actions. Let's start with the feed name. Feed name is the is the name that you give to the various feeds inside your now. So the various item inside your now, that's what you call the feed name. For example, if you are creating a, let's say you're creating um, a banking application, right? And you want to create some of the feed name that a user will have. A user will have a name, will have an email, will have a user ID. It will have the created time. Um, it will have the last visited time. It will have something like their security key. It will have their credit card details. Those are various items that is inside your now collection. I hope that makes sense to you. So um, so uh, let's, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we'll do is that a user will have an email, right? A user will have a quality. That's it. So a noun will have a quality. So let's go like an user will have a mail, an email. So we we'll say email. And the data type. This is where you don't want to miss. If you have a wrong data type, it will return the wrong value or your app will keep breaking. That's what will happen. Flutterflow does not have a does not really have a very good way to show you all the bugs. Except maybe you're using a dev console. So you want to go use a dev console. That's the only way it will. But if you're building on Flutterflow, the screen just go blank. I guess you've seen those blank screens, right? The screen just go blank and you're wondering, what do I do with this? What do I do with this? Because Flutterflow cannot really interpret those stuff for you as fast as possible. So email is a string. String is either a number or a test. That's what a string is. A string, a string is either a number or a test without format. So it's not formatted. It's just a string. A string can carry like a number. Let's say, for example, someone on your app decides to pick a username called James555. If it's a number, the person can only enter 555. If it's a string, the person can enter James, alphabet, and numbers all at the same time. So you guess it, right? An email is going to be a string. Once you're done... Click on the checkbox. <clears throat> so where to go? So now a user will have an email. Then late next, a user will have a name. A user will have a name. So be very careful the way you are naming your the way you are naming, and you want your your app to follow a very repeatable naming pattern. You can see I'm using all small caps. You can also name yours like this name, or you can use a comma case like name first like name first like this that's a comma case you know the way a comma the back of a comma will look like it rises and falls name first name like this or you can say name underscore first just like that so you have to follow a very repeatable way of naming your application so let's go let's say name then the type will be string yeah then we we'll say okay and the next thing we want to do, let's say age, so we can try other forms of user characteristics. So the next thing will be, yes, what will it? What will the age be? The age of a person will be a number. Of course, the age of a person will be a number. So we we'll say a number. What is a number? A number is, is an integer. That's what the name will be. That's what the age will be. And if we say date of birth, if we say date, of birth like the let's use the let's use the date of birth what will it be it's gonna be a date that's what it will be to be a date because it's just storing a date that's what it's storing it's gonna be a date or say look we have different dates date, this tie here so if you so it's gonna be a date type but uh um so i'm not seeing it right there so it's going to be a date type or it's going to be a timestamp. So you can use a timestamp right here. Just call it a timestamp because 
Um, here you'll be able to choose the day, the month, the hour, if it's a timestamp. But uh, I, I don't know, I think maybe this is a bit of a bug, so that's why it's not showing. It's supposed to give me some options here. But let's just go with a timestamp. Say OK. Then we then have profile image, profile underscore image. On the profile image, it's going to be a photo. That's where it's going to be. It's going to be a photo. That's where it will be. But on lots of other uh, no-code applications, this would just be a link instead. So if you just take a link, so what it will do is that it will upload the file to your database and then turn it into a link. That's what it does. That's what, even Flutterflow, that's what it does. But in this, in Flutterflow, you just call it a photo path. In some of the on other uh, tools, you might also see image. They, it should just be abbreviated as IMG. So just know that that's what they're asking you for. So it's gonna be a photo path. Then let's say they have a profile video. Let's say they have to upload a video. A profile video will be a video path. That's where it's gonna be. Then let's say they have an address. What will it be? So now we have latitude, we have color, we have document string, we have data type. The, the, the address is going to be latitude and longitude. Remember, in your geography days in school, you would learn latitude and then you will learn longitude. The, the way you get this, yeah? Users cannot tell what's their latitude and what's their longitude. So the way you will learn this is to allow the user to give you their address. So um, there's a way you can request current location from the user. So if you request current device location, then you can tell the longitude and latitude and just store it. So don't request this data from your user. Instead, give them a prompt. When you click on that prompt, then they can you know, give you their longitude and the latitude. So let's go ahead. That's what it's going to be. So if a user has colors, maybe your, your app has a lot of teams. Have a, have a lot of teams, maybe dark team, light team, blue team. So if you're doing something like a girly application, yeah, that has lots of girly colors, and you want your users to be able to change their colors based on their mood. You want your app colors to change based on your, based on your, your user's mold, maybe angry, the app turns red, <laughs> maybe um, very happy, the app turns a different color entirely. So you can hold a color string called color, and this is going to be type color. And this color will not be will not be imputed just like that by the user. So it will be imputed based on the option. So when a user click on that button, you will go ahead and update the user itself, and then you know update the user, and the app screen will change to that particular color. So um, then there is something. Let's say you're creating a social media application, right? Or let's say you're creating an e-commerce application. What you want to do, you want to keep a list you know, you want to keep a list of something, a list of something that a user will, you know, would normally, maybe a list of likes, a list of photos, a list of uh, profile page to visit her, just a list of something, right? That's what you want to do. So if we want to do that, we have to create a data type called a list. The way we do that is that we can say these are list of um, items. Or we could say this is a list of likes. Let's say you're trying to figure out what your users like. Then we will say this is a list. Yeah. Click on the list. Is it list? And you'll say, what, what's that going to be? Is it going to be a list of string? Like where the like is going to be like I like rice, vegetable, indomie, noodles, and all that stuff. Is it going to be a list of school? Is it going to be a list of people? That's where it's gonna that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna figure all this out. So for example, let's just say it's a list of strings, so we're gonna be a list. And you can see so what this means is that this particular that part of the database can can store many things. Can store like four hundred items, hundred items, lots of items about this particular user. Just like um if you go to Facebook or you go to Twitter. Everyone who's following you is stored in a list in your own database. Everyone you're following is stored in your own list. So that's why you can store more people. Let me show you how to do something like that. So let's go ahead and create another collection. This collection will be something called followers. Followers. And we're going to say create. And start from scratch. That's fine. 
then let's say this this is some sort of a social media right so we're making so many so many um reference here so you can get the way it's setting up how setting up a user database works so let's say this is going to be list of followers yeah then we're going to say this that type is a list uh -huh. but then is a reference yeah, it's a reference and it's a list. And what's it going to be? It's going to be a reference of my followers. Yeah, if I want to. Or it's going to be a reference of users. So you can see, depending on how you're going to be structuring your database. If followers is another item that means a lot to you in your database, then fine. If what, people, what you're going to be following are called users, then it's going to be a list of users. Then you're going to be adding users inside of this list when I click a button or when I perform a particular action. Um, so what else are we going to try? Then let's try document reference. So, you know, a noun is always performing an action every time. So if this particular noun, which is called a user, is performing an action in followers, then you want to reference to it. For example, if you're setting up an e-commerce store and in your e-commerce store you have flowers as a category, then you have types of flowers, like thousands of different types of flowers as a subcategory. Then you then have flowers that belong to the subcategory. So what you do, you'll create a reference of flower of the you know the main flower, the subflower. And then the flower. So you'll be able to tell what flower belongs to what. So you, so when a user click on the main flower, it brings out all the subflowers. And when they click on the subflowers, it brings out all the flowers that it belongs to that subflowers. I just hope it makes sense to you right now. So for example, if I have a full, if I if this is a flower, if this is a flower and a user is if a user is performing an action in, in here. Okay, let's just, let's just, for the sake of this example, let's say flowers, or let's just say cart, if it's an e-commerce store, let's say cart, start from scratch. So let's say a user will always be adding stuff in the cart, yeah, or it might be a list of things that the user has purchased before. So we will then say cart, you can call it whatever you want to call it, just make sure that you understand it, reference, cart. So if this is going to be a list, so this type of reference will likely be a list, yeah? Because a user can have many cards. A user can have more than one item. We can have many, many, many cards, yeah? In one, uh, at, uh, can hold many cards, especially if you want to store this for a very long time where you're not changing the data, just saying, I want to be able to see all the things that this user has purchased for over a lifetime. So that's basically what you want to do. You want to hold it as a list save so next is time create a time so if you created a user you want to pick the time and you guessed it right right it's going to be a timestamp that's where it's going to be a timestamp and let's say you are uh, you allow your users to do audio recording something like podcast like the way you're listening to me right now you know what it's going to be it's going to be an audio that's what it's going to be so adalo um flutterflow enable you to create a streaming application where users can upload their audio device uh, their their voice and their sound into your application just like that. And also, there are other types of database that you can explore. If you go right here, you can create your own data type. You can create your own data type and tell what the data type is all about. I'm going to be covering that in my um, at, uh, Flutterflow in my Flutterflow crash course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be covering that. Uh, hopefully it's gonna be free. I'm not very sure yet, but I'm gonna be covering how, to, how that works and what that is all about. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me via the link below and uh, you can leave it in the comment section and if you're looking forward to building your Flutterflow application uh, you need some guidance or you need someone to build the entire application feel free to reach out to me and I'll do well to work with you thank you so much for watching this once again have a lovely 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 Flutterflow day ahead bye